Welcome everybody to the conclusion of the sixth season of the Road to NBA 2K22 series here on the PlayStation 5, episode number 88 today. It's been a wild ride this season, through and through. We've fought through a lot of adversity as a team this year, and we've given ourselves one last chance to contend for the Eastern Conference crown with only a dozen games left to go on our schedule. Overcoming the Miami Heat may be a long shot. We trail them by four and a half games, but fending off James Harden and the Chicago Bulls for the second straight seed would be an accomplishment in itself as they also sport 48 wins just like we do at this point in the season. Today we open up at home against the Utah Jazz who have a lot to play for as well. They're in a very similar situation to us. The first seed is more than likely out of reach in the Western Conference as well. Dallas is running away with it, but they can still power past Phoenix and Memphis to lock up the number two seed, only trailing the latter team by a single game. So we're back in the garden, only a matter of time before it's a playoff atmosphere in here. I'm excited to bring that back to New York basketball as we try to continue our hot streak. We're actually riding a four game winning streak from last episode. But let's also not forget that we need to help Donnie G regain his form. It's been kind of pseudo success for him. His numbers across the board have been down since switching to the small forward position after we acquired Montrez Harrell for Cade Cunningham before the break. So finding a balance between Donovan's success and the team's success may be the difference between a ring or an early exit this season in the playoffs. But without further ado, let's get started today at home against the Utah Jazz. Feels great to be back with you guys as we're about to wrap up another season of Road to NBA 2K22 basketball as Donovan Mitchell gets things underway tonight. His road stats have been insane. He's been one of the best players away from his home arena. 24, or excuse me, 27.4 points per game away from Utah as Obi helps me out on this possession. And the lob goes up to Montrez Harrell, all started by Obi Toppin. Playing some defense as he's done all season long and showing off that vertical. Montrez Harrell has been very impressive this season. He's actually fourth in the NBA in field goal percentage at 64% as I'm locking down Conley here. Gobert, then I take it away from the seven foot Frenchman. Up ahead to Ferran in the left corner and we retake the lead here early. Ferran's also put together a very awesome season, including what he's been doing after the All-Star break. Look at this, last five games up near 28 points per game. That would put him up near the entire league leaders. I believe Giannis is leading the league at like 28.4 points per game, if I remember correctly last time I checked. So Ferran is really helping us out as I hit Conley with a step back three, leading into a green light release as well. It doesn't get much sweeter than that, especially for someone like me who doesn't really take threes all that much. I know my abilities all that well, and I mean, hey, it's about two threes per game this season, 34% from three. This is up there with one of my more efficient seasons from behind the line. Uh, I believe I had a season where I shot 35% back on New Orleans, but this one's a pretty serviceable year as well from beyond the three-point stripe. So now we jump to the second quarter. We were up 15 to seven after that three, but Utah making it close here as I check back in with the starting five, Donnie G, giving me assist number five already. Gotta get him going early. I had two games last episode where I had at least 15 points and 15 assists, and it looks like I'm on pace for that as well as I'm already up to five and five, but I had to show that Donovan Mitchell assist. Speaking of delicious dimes, that one was really impressive. Mitchell doing it all for Utah here in the early goings. Man, his stats away from home have been insane, an offensive rating of just under eight. And if you're not really that big of an analytics fan, that's a pretty damn good mark as I give Donnie a nice feed, wrapping this one around the entire Jazz defense. Man, I'm trying to get Donovan going, man. He's not looked the same since transitioning to the small forward position. He did put together a really solid episode last time out and really improved on some of his totals, but one thing we need to talk about throughout this episode is if we knock down Montrez Harrell back to the bench, which is going to be really hard to do because he's been really effective since coming over from Washington, then who do we put in at the three to replace him? If we were going to move Donovan back to the four, do we put in Quentin Grimes, who's been pretty solid in limited action? Mitchell Drew, do we put him at the two, slide for onto the three, as here is a pretty dangerous foul for Obi. Um, Eric Pascal, the rascal, seems to always be putting his best foot forward when he's out there on the floor. Uh, we got a couple options we can consider, so we're going to be talking about that through this episode. And you take a look there, you see at the bottom of your screen, Montrez Harrell, one of the more efficient scorers throughout the season. And... It's pretty interesting to see here Utah going back to the line. They actually shot 26 free throws in the first half, I believe. 
We had a couple players get into some foul trouble. I believe that was Obi's third, that hard foul on Bogdanovich. But uh, that's really the main reason why Utah is hanging in this game. They're knocking down their free throws, and they're getting a lot of them, a lot of calls at the rim. So now we're down by four all of a sudden after a hot start, and something pretty funny happens here. Look at this glitch. <laughs> the camera <laughs> fixed on Donovan Mitchell. And right when this happened, I heard uh, a swish of the net, so I go into replay mode to investigate. And, of course, it had to be my man, Mike Conley. I had no idea where I was at on the floor um, so some tough luck there to begin the second half. I hope that one gets patched because I actually had to end up calling a timeout just to fix Donovan it. So Mitchell. this has been a glitch I've seen not only in 2K22, but I've had this in 2K21 happen to me a couple times. I would just hate for this to happen in a very serious part of the ball game where we don't have a timeout. So that's something I'd like to see patched. So Montrez Harrell in the post on this possession. He brings like three guys to him. So I get a lane. I draw two myself. Utah all out of position and they forget about Donovan. Another assist goes to my main man, Donovan G. And he's putting together a very solid first couple minutes in this one as we try to get back in this game. We're trying to channel that first quarter, Knicks. We were up 15 to seven and it's not been the same success since, but it's Donovan Gray with the backdoor feed to Obi lobbing it up as, as uh, Obi beats uh, Victor Oladipo on the backdoor feed. And things getting a little crazy here on this possession. Ferran gets blocked. It's Oladipo trying to feed it inside to Mitchell. And this one's cut off by Donnie G looking across the court to Obi Toppin. It looks good out of the hand, but it's a little too strong from the left corner. So now uh, it's Utah pushing it up the other way, and it's another foul on Obi. And once again, this one looked pretty clean. 26 free throws in the first half for Utah, and they've already been to the line now three times with uh, Bogdanovich's trip. And I find myself checking out here for the rest of the third quarter, and we are back up by seven. So the bench now helping us out rather than hurting us like they did in the first half. So we'll see if we can sit on this lead for a huge win as we try to continue to fight for that first seed and fend off the Bulls and see if we can make it interesting with Miami here at the end of season six. So, a little dribble handoff play between me and Ferran as this one's blocked. You guys saw me have a pretty solid first half, five and five, but ever since I've only scored one basket and I've shot one for five here in the second half with this block. Gobert's been everywhere. It's been so hard just to find any room for me here in the second half. They've really neutralized my offensive um, performance in terms of finding my own shot. I am approaching 10 assists. I can grab that here as this play was originally for Donovan. I couldn't find him on the backdoor feed off of the pick and roll, but we do not give up. We set two more screens for him on that floppy play and we retake the lead. But now it's five unanswered points for Utah as they answer back very quickly. Hassan Whiteside getting a little lazy with the pass as Donovan Mitchell is going to have to improvise here with eight seconds left going from all the way near under his own basket. Conley, this is a bad shot. To this point, I've held him to three for 10 shooting. So I've kept Conley in check as look at this. It's a green light from 15 feet, but it's blocked. Another shot gets blocked, but Gobert still sticks on me and he almost takes it away. So now I'm frustrated. Now I'm thinking like, hey, I got to put Gobert in his place. He's had my number all second half long, but I work to my right and I step it back a little bit. Get some oohs and ahs from the crowd as that one finally knocks through. That one felt very cathartic as I tie up this game. Finally, something goes my way in terms of finding my own shot. Utah has been suffocating me here in the second half in terms of finding my own release. But finally, one sinks through, and that was a lot tougher shot than it looked. So we're moving on here, still 83 apiece as we're approaching the four and a half minute mark. The starting five back in for the Knicks. As look at this, I see Donovan. He's got the mismatch on him, putting his shoulder into Mitchell, fading away. Another shot that looked tougher than it looked, and or rather easier than it looked. Donovan made it look easy, I should say. But I would hit the bench here after retaking the lead. This was a bit of a weird ripple that Tom Thibodeau uh, decided to instill in his game plan here. I would check out with four and a half minutes left to play, come back in with 144 left on the game clock, with Emmanuel quickly, Ferran, and myself being the backcourt. Yeah, this was weird. Uh, I checked out and came back in three minutes later in a very crucial part in the ball game. But also joining me out on the floor would be Donovan and Boban Marjanovic. A very weird lineup we're seeing here from T uh, Tom Thibodeau. And this is a, the biggest reason why. Quickly's playing the two, and I don't think you want 
uh, quickly to be the most ideal matchup whenever Donovan Mitchell's having a night like he's having. Braun is definitely our best defensive guard with me coming in at a close second, so I don't think you want IQ on him out of all people, but now we're trying to set up a, a play for him, and I don't trust him at this point in the ball game. so now I'm waiting for Boban for the secondary option on this play. A pick and roll, switching over to me is Oladipo, and I had a lane, but once again it's Gobert foiling my plans of scoring there and Theron's gonna have to force one up on top of Joe Ingles and this one's off the mark once again we've gone cold here as Mitchell works fast but this one's off the mark 39 seconds left to play as I'm setting things up here for the Knicks we're once again running this unconventional lineup and we only have one timeout left so it's not like I can take things in my own hands and burn one because I don't want to be without a timeout for the rest of the game. We get the switch we want but Gobert's been tough. Can I manage to score on top of him? I'll dish it off to Boban with one second left to shoot and this one's off the mark again. We cannot score in the final 114 left in the game. We'll see if that can change as we have to play the free throw game. And look at Ferran getting right in the face of Donovan Mitchell as we foul him. I'm dapping him up, and he's trying to get into the head of Donovan, or rather, Mike Conley, I should say. Look at him throwing his arm out like, man, I don't trust you. You ain't going to hit these. Well, he knocks down the first one. Uh, we are able to keep Mitchell away from the line. He shot 87% on the year. Conley under 80%, 78 to be in fact, to... Um, Push it to a four-point game, though, as all that matters is that he shot 100% on this trip to the line. So, this is a huge game for us. If we want to stay in front of the Bulls, who are tied with right now in the standings, we're going to have to get some magic on our side here. It's Ferran off the inbound, and it knocks through. Finally, a basket near the end of the game. It's the first time we've scored since about 140 left to play, and we end up fouling Mitchell. We really don't have another choice as it's about six seconds left to shoot, and obviously Mitchell's like the last guy we want to see at the line. So two free throws for number 45. The Jazz, just looking at their stats, have made it a priority to get to the free throw line early and often, and that's what's really saved them this game after their slow start. Of course, Mitchell will knock down two for two, so this is our last chance. Here we go, five seconds left. I'm looking for Ferran, he's fading to the left corner. Our last chance today for overtime! And Ferran comes through! Back-to-back -back threes for Ferran to save the game as Donovan, he sighs in relief. Oh my goodness, Ferran, showing off his clutch jeans once again. I've seen it a few times now in my two-year career as a New York Knick with Ferran by my side. Time and time again, he's come through near the end of games, and this one is no exception. Six points in six seconds for Ferran to save this game, as Conley then begins overtime, getting his shot blocked. That one felt nice out by the hands of myself, and I'm moving off of Ferran very nicely there. Finally a bucket, and it's another consecutive double-double uh, in a game for myself that we've actually sat in and watched. So now we extend it to 102.98 is the lead for the New York Knicks. Da uh, Ferran hits two more free throws. As look at this, a little give and go between Ferran and Donovan to knock in two more. This is our biggest lead of the entire uh, overtime period and just continues to grow. And honestly, our offense has looked awesome here in the extra period of play, but things have really started on the defensive side of the floor. They're still looking for their first basket of overtime, but finally, Mitchell knocks it through. 23 on the night for Donovan Mitchell. Him and Ferran been going back and forth. It's been an awesome matchup between those two. As Ferran trying to set up the dagger for him, and it just rims out. Finally, Ferran cools off. As I'm pressuring Conley, he gives it off to Mitchell, who tries it again, and this one is off to the right. Both teams becoming a little bit out of control, so now I'm walking the ball up the floor. I want to go a lot slower on this time around. We just need one more basket, and the Utah Jazz can say goodnight. It's for Ron with the runner. All eight of our points in overtime have gone through the hands of number one, and we would end up finishing it off at the free throw line. Uh, yours truly has a chance to put things away, and that I would. Just under 90% for myself this season, 89.5% from the charity stripe, and this would be no problem for myself. 108 to 100 would be your final score in an awesome and probable comeback win against the Utah Jazz at home. We need to win these tight ones if we're going to fend off Chicago, Miami, 
and uh, I believe Brooklyn is the fourth seed right now of the season at the day. 26 points for Ferran today, including four threes, and of course channeling his inner Tracy McGrady there near at the end of regulation. Two out of those four threes were the biggest shots the entire game, and Donovan put together a pretty solid outing. I wanted to get him going really very effective and efficient on both sides of the floor. 17-12, over 50% shooting. For myself, I was under 50% uh, for the first time in a couple games but I still put together a pretty solid outing and fighting off those five personals I had. I didn't even talk about that. Yeah, Utah was at the line a lot and we were able to come through a lot of those bad calls to still put together a huge win to keep pace with the Bulls for that second seed. Donovan Mitchell with 23 as I held Mike Conley to 15 points on five for 21 shooting. A lot of his uh, points came from the free throw line naturally with my five personals. So we're gonna head back to simulating We're gonna simulate the next week and play against Chicago in a game that might very well determine who's the second seed when postseason ball comes around in a couple weeks Opening things up with a huge win against Atlanta as we ran them out of the gym Montrez Harrell with 26 points in 26 minutes. It's like how can you take him out of the starting five when he continues to play so well? Um, Ferran with 14 this time around, but 14 assists, and Donovan with 18, 7, and 7. Uh, those two guys had my back because, once again, it wasn't a great offensive performance for me, but I did hold Trey Young the 3 for 13 shooting. Then a close one against Charlotte. We were able to fend them off in the fourth quarter, 29 this time for Ferran, 14 and 13 for myself, and Donovan was flirting with a triple-double in this one against Zion Williamson. Mitchell drew with 13 points off the bench. He was playing well throughout this entire simulation period through this week. And then a huge win against Miami. And a win like this may very well keep the door cracked open for us to have a chance at competing with South Beach for that number one overall seed in the Eastern Conference. We'll be looking at the standings after we're done with the simulation period for sure because things are starting to get really interesting after this huge win as we held Miami to 8 of 30 from behind the line. As we all know in the playoffs last year, they were destroying us from three-point land inside and out. But then a weird one. We then drop a game after Detroit outscores us 32 to 19 in the fourth and they knock us off by one. This was a really weird one. After beating the uh, defending Eastern Conference champions we then fall to Detroit. This one was definitely one that we don't need to remember. Um, me, Ferran, and Donovan all had to do the pretty much everything for us, but we didn't do it very efficiently, so that was really all the difference in that one. So that will snap the winning streak. But hey, at least we're sitting at 52 wins, and we got a pretty decent lead uh, against the uh, Windy City team <laughs> over in Chicago right now. We're a uh, game and a half up on them, so if we take this one, then this very well may clinch the second seed for us. And at that point, we'll be just playing for house money because anything more than that, if we can make it interesting with Miami down the stretch, then hey, that's just an extra little icing on the cake for us. As Of course, the Bulls, one of the teams in the East that have become stacked over the course of the road to NBA 2K, they add James Harden, of course, and Zach Levine, 22 points per game. That's 12th in the NBA, right behind Ferran, who's 11th right now at around 22 on the dot. And you may expect that Lonzo Ball will be my matchup today. Well, that's not entirely true. As we take a look at the starting lineups, somebody earns their first NBA start and will be guarding Lonzo Ball while I switch over to James Harden. Mitchell Drew, my former Texas teammate who's been through a lot in his life and his basketball career specifically, he climbs the mountaintop and it looks like Tom Thibodeau is continuing to experiment, trying to move Donovan back to that power forward position where he's looked a lot more comfortable. And it looks like he wants to give Mitchell Drew the start today. So I'll be at the one, Drew at the two, and Ferran slides to the three as we try to combat Chicago's small ball lineup as it'll be Levine versus Ferran at the three and Donovan versus DeMar DeRozan at the four. So a pretty interesting matchup if I do say so myself. I'm making things a little bit easier for Mitchell Drew in his NBA debut as I'm, I'll be the one taking on James Harden and he will be defending Lonzo Ball as DeMar DeRozan helps the Bulls jump out to a 5-0 lead. Let's see who our first basket's going to come by the hands of. I'm going to draw three Bulls into the paint and it'll be Mitchell Drew with the green light from the corner. That was a very confident looking shot. I wanted to get the butterflies out of Mitchell Drew immediately and find him for the first basket for the Knicks side of things today. Chicago up by six here in the early goings, about halfway through the first half as Drew receives a screen 
And it's a decent looking shot for him in the corner, or rather the elbow, but it'll be Ferran tipping it in off the miss. And of course Donovan doing the dirty work. Finally something goes our way. It was a pretty passive first half of offensive action for the Knicks, very unlike us. But the bench helps us out, and that's something I'm going to be talking about a lot today. The bench and their success as Montres Harrell moves to our six-man position and still plays 23 minutes a game as a little behind the head pass to Obi Toppin for our first three-pointer of the second half of action as we open things up a little bit. Getting a little fancy there for my fourth assist, but I'm still not on the board yet. And it'll be a tough matchup here with either James Harden or Lonzo Ball covering me as Eric Paschal curls off a screen. And look at this touch pass up as you see at the bottom of your screen some interesting news. Zach Levine gets injured. We'll be coming back to that in a second. Uh, as you see here, after the nice assist from Pascal to Toppin, we get some pretty sour news for the Bulls. A hyperextended left shoulder for Zach Levine, four to six weeks, and the playoffs are about three weeks away, so it's pretty much a guarantee that Levine will either be out or playing hurt for at least one round for the Bulls. So he's their top scorer as I work my way open. It's Pascal finding me on the perimeter. I gotta show him some love as well. Pascal, nine points, three rebounds and about 50% shooting. It seems like every time we jump into a game, Pascal always seems to have a good one. And simulation is a little up and down, but whenever we're playing the games, he seems to always do well off the bench. As look at this one right here. Oh my goodness, I get Daniel Gafford slipping a little bit. And then unfortunately this won't be an assist for me, but a very nice dime uh, as I find Donovan off of the ankle breaker, but Lonzo Ball tips the pass, ruins the highlight play, but I don't care. It was still a nice one in my book, and Donovan's grinning. He is feeling good. This is probably the best we've seen Donovan since moving to the small forward position as he's back to his native power forward position today. It's a nine-point lead for New York with five minutes left to play here in the second quarter. And look at this. We open things up with a huge run, and you got nothing to thank but the bench for this one. I know Montrezl Harrell's been so effective and he's got to move back to the bench which is kind of a shame but this does open up a pretty interesting point for us to think about moving forward. If the bench is playing this well with Harrell being the leader of that second unit then maybe he is better suited to be coming off the bench as Mitchell Drew tries to get fancy up to Obi Toppin. Uh, yeah that one's knocked away but Zach Levine comes in and look at this pass. He had to give up his dribble in the backcourt as Ferran pulls up for a triple to really blow things wide open. But yeah, Zach Levine just looked really weird on that play. You can see, you can tell that shoulder is bothering him. I'm really surprised to even see him here, uh, out here on the court, as we move things along pretty quickly here at the end of the third quarter. And it's not been, once again, not a great game for me finding my own shots. But hey, I want to get things started here as I put in a little teardrop on top of Kobe White's. He lost his footing there and I took advantage. So it's a 20 plus point game as we enter the fourth quarter as Chicago looked like a very different team once their top scorer and performer on the year was forced out due to a shoulder injury. We didn't see much of Zach Levine moving forward and the bench continues to blow the doors off of this one. The lead jumps from 21 to 36 as I make my re-entry back out on the floor with only a couple minutes left to play. It's Lonzo Ball. Look at Montrez Harrell getting up right in his grill, not letting him have any space to breathe. Ferran, the rebound. And how about one more highlight play to take us home? He gives it up to me. And I give it back to Ferran as he's setting up this play. And it's Donovan moving back door as he tips it in. And he's hit from behind for the three-point play. And it was a very pretty one at that. Ferran lobs it up. And Donovan wanted to dunk it down. You could tell. But nah, he fights through the contact and just tips it in. Oh my goodness. What a play and what a day for Donovan G. Going back to that native power forward position. You could tell he looks so much better. And it was that, along with Mitchell Drew playing well in his first start, Montrose Harrell leading the bench, and Zach Levine going out early, that led to this dominating Knicks win. And it was a statement win at that. 28-13-3 for Donovan, 12 for 17 from the floor. This was the performance we were waiting for, and it's pretty obvious to see that Donovan is much well suited at that power forward slot. But you can't sleep on Ferran to 24, 4, 4, and 6 steals, 9 to 15 shooting, as Montrezl Harrell led the bench with a double double on the game. 
and nine points, 10 rebounds for myself. And look at that plus minus for Montrez, 28. That was the second highest on the team right behind Ferran. Oh my goodness, man. Montrez Harrell may be the spark plug we need off the bench to, you know, become even more meta as a team. Nine points, 10 assists for myself, only seven shots taken. Um, Mitchell Drew had a pretty up and down first start. He had a really solid opening quarter, kind of cooled off a little bit, had some bad turnovers there, but still chipped in seven in a blowout effort. Don, um, on the defensive side of the floor, we held pretty much everyone in check. I held Ferran, or rather James Harden to 14, four and four, and Zach Levine four for 16. Uh, I'm surprised he even came back in and played 31 minutes. I think the Bulls are better off just sitting him until he's back fully healthy and that's some pretty big news for the uh third seed in the east a lot of guys around the league talking about zach levine potentially having to go out for the next three to four weeks but as we head back to simulating we take two out of our next three as wins as donovan once again has zion's number in simulating 27 19 and 10 and then we split the next two games against cleveland and orlando but with three games left to go in the year, we then play Brooklyn, who now has ascended on top of Chicago. They're red hot right now, Brooklyn is, and they now only sit at a game back for that second seed in the East. Miami's on a winning streak. They pretty much mathematically have the one seed locked up, so they've already clinched the conference. We can't compete with Chicago anymore, but we still have to worry about Brooklyn. They're at one game back, and we got three games left to go in the season. So we're trying to handle our business back at home and for, throughout these next couple games since we're running, running low on time here, I'm just going to take you through the biggest plays of these next three games because I will be hopping into the Nets, the Wizards, and the Raptors games. So I'll just be playing a couple highlights here and there since we're already running low on time. So here we're jumping to the second half already. Damian Lillard with 19 already on my head, but I got 10 and 7 in response. Of course, that's never going to change. Me and Lillard going back and forth like the good old days as I hand this one off to Ferran for another assist, approaching a first half double-double as we take things into the intermission, starting to finally build up a pretty decent lead against Brooklyn. And then here in the second half, we will take it to the Nets. Look at Ferran up against Bruce Brown. He sends him back. Oh my goodness, Ferran continuing to play defense. You can always count on him to give it all on both sides of the floor. And then Montres Harrell, who moves back to the starting five this game, I find him dunking it down on Nick Claxton. So it's another blowout statement win for the New York Knicks. We're up near 60% shooting as a team on the ball game. And look at this pass over to Jaleel Okafor, and he gives it right back to me. Good to see him me finally getting some more minutes with Okafor. My, me and him, of course, go way back. And yeah, so... It will be another historic blowout win for us. Back-to-back -back statement wins against Chicago and Brooklyn, the two other top dogs in the East, right behind Miami. I think we finally proved in these last two matchups that we are the best team in the East outside of Miami, and we have the best chance of taking down the defending Eastern Conference champions. 27 for Ferran against his idol, um, Kyrie Irving. 23 14 and 3 uh, donovan once again hitting his stride this is great to see today he played small forward and he looked like his power forward self so that's awesome to see i 18 6 12 2 my best offensive day of the episode for sure um all in all and as we continue to scroll down you see all these guys in double figures quentin grimes obi toppin eric pascal and mitchell drew a lot of guys trying to make their case to tom thibodeau to be that guy that plays small forward while donovan moves back to the power forward position Lillard had 27, but I held him in check for the second half of action. And Donovan held Durant in check, 19 for Durantula on 50% shooting. And this one pretty much locks up the second seed, but not mathematically just yet. Two games left to go on the year for us and Brooklyn, and we lead them by two games. So if we drop these next two games and Brooklyn wins out, then it's going to come down to a tiebreaker. And I don't know who owns the tiebreaker. I'm like 99% sure it comes down to head-to-head -head record, but I also don't know who has the better record between us and Brooklyn this season. I know the two games we've played against them, we've won, but I forget what we've done in simulations, so I don't want it to come down to that. So we are going to simcast these next two games against Toronto and Washington, and this one's a close one against Kay Cunningham and the Wizards. As we try to finally clinch that final seed, it'll be... Uh, Donovan giving it up to me on this possession and I'm working to my left. This one's off the mark as it's been another tough day for me. Only eight points and seven assists against Kate Cunningham as Washington owns a six point lead 
with under seconds left to play. It's Jerome Clifford guarded by Donovan. We need a stop for us to have a chance in this one. It's Donovan's for taunts for the knockout punch, and it's off the mark. We got to get out, and we got to run. Obi up to me. Here we go. 32 seconds, rather 38 seconds left. A little handoff to Donovan, but... I try to give it back to him at 15 feet away, and he's tired, so he cannot knock it down. As this final uh, couple minutes of the Wizards game didn't really go our way. Um, yeah, so that we didn't get it done against Washington, but we can pretty much still clinch, actually, if Brooklyn loses. The math still favors us. Uh, Brooklyn, if they lose their game to Dite, then we can clinch that. And they play Cleveland, so we'll see if the Cavs want to play uh, the spoiler. Well, it's not going so well <laughs> here in the first half. As Brooklyn, they will win all four quarters en route to a blowout effort to keep their hopes alive at the second seed. But at the end of the day, our fate is still within our own hands. We still control our own destiny. If we take care of business against the six on game 82, then we can still clinch that to seed. But if we lose and Brooklyn beats down the under 500 Indiana Pacers, then it'll come down to a tiebreaker. And who knows what that'll be determined by. So we're going to move along here in uh, SimCast once again. We jump out to a 12 point lead at one point in the third quarter, but then the six begins to chip away a little bit with Ferran leading us all with 34 points. And as Eric Pascal is the second leading score with only 12. And as you see, three for 10 shooting, six turnovers. Once again, I'm just not showing up here in these last couple games when it really matters the most. Doesn't do a whole good uh, amount of number on my own legacy uh, performances like this. And then Donovan, you gotta score all the way down to see that he's fouled out after 13 minutes of play so just like the old days aka last season it's gonna come down to me and Ferran and a whole bunch of other guys <laughs> just like last season we're gonna have to lead us to victory as Eric pa or rather uh, Pascal Siakam ties it with two free throws I try to retake the lead off of a nice inbounds play but just nothing wants to go my way now falling to four for 14 shooting and I'm not I don't even have 10 assists which is kind of my my threshold whether or not I've had a good passing game or not but this one is closed down nicely by Ferran and I'm looking for assistance uh, here on the break I try to fit this one inside to Nadim on the back door feed and despite it being deflected Ferran still cashes in and puts in points 37 and 38 on the night man Ferran he's coming through once again down the stretch of this season now two seconds left the switch it's OG on me decent look but again the rim doesn't do me any favors Oh my goodness, now 4 for 15 shooting. I've got to come through here. This is game 82 to determine who gets the second seed. And some bragging rights between us and Brooklyn as Pascal Siakam with his inside hand scores over Montrez Harrell. So 5 out on the floor. It becomes uh, Eric Pascal at the 3 with no Donny G out there with his 6 fouls. He's already disqualified. It's OG's open from the corner, Eric Pascal with a sigh of relief how can you leave him open at this stage man jeez now 40 seconds left it's a 94 game both teams tied as toronto wants to play some spoiler here nobody's making it easy on us we're gonna have to earn this second seed finally a step back jumper falls for me good screen there by montrez all right so this has been a marathon episode but it all comes down to these couple last possessions this is what the episode's been all about fighting for that two seed as miami pretty much ran away with the east do we have it in us to take it over here at the end of the game and we just needed one stop of montrez harrell foul siakam on the drive oh man it's tough to cover siakam he's just so physical one-on-one -on -one when he's going downhill like that and he will step up and knock down two free throws. And we won't call timeout here. Tom Thibodeau says clear it out. So it'll come down to the same point guard I battled last year in the conference finals against the Heat, Goran Dragic. One last chance today in regulation. Six seconds left. I beat him off the dribble drive. And the floater goes on top of OG. Let's go! We might have just sealed it. And we might have just clinched the second seed for us. It took a little bit longer than it should have. But this might be where we finally clinch it oh my goodness this is a good feeling and Jalou Okafor the first guy to come out and dab me up my teammate from my rookie season it's good to see that so checking back in 4.6 ticks left for the wraps to try to play spoiler it'll be a ball reversal to Siakam at the top of the key for the win 
Gotta give them credit. Toronto went for the dagger. They went for the win. They weren't trying to play for overtime. But overall, we come out on top, 98-96. We clinch that second seed despite all the turmoil. Me not playing all these last couple games. Donovan fouling out. And Ferran having to do it pretty much all by himself until those last two possessions whenever I finally came through. We battled through it all. And we were able to clinch the second seed as Brooklyn would win against the Indiana Pacers. So <laughs> we needed this one or else it would have came down to a tiebreaker. So we come through, thank goodness, as we look towards the next episode. This one's already gone on long enough. As it'll be next episode where I reveal to you guys all the award winners, um, the MVP race and all that, the final standings, the final stats, statistical leaders of the NBA season. And of course, last but not least, who we're gonna be playing in the first round of this sixth season of the road to NBA 2K22 and it's a pretty surprising yet interesting team we'll be battling in the Eastern Conference first round. So taking a look at some of the final statistics of season six is where we're going to end it off today. I appreciate you guys making it another very exciting season and enjoyable season of the road to NBA 2K22 series here on the next gen console. It's been a lot of fun, but this is when it becomes even more enjoyable. Playoffs right around the corner. The next episode you see me, we will be playing some postseason basketball back at the garden, open things up against a pretty formidable yet interesting opponent. It'll be that seven seed. So I appreciate you guys stopping by today. Hope you guys have a great night. And I hope you're looking forward to some more playoff basketball on the channel. Like a comment said that I saw, it's the best time on the channel. And I'm going to have to agree with you guys there. I love the playoffs, no matter what series it is. So see you guys then. Take care, everybody.